All right, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how I stopped being a slave to my habits. And if you don't think that you are a slave to your habits, odds are that you probably are. I was, I was like this for a long time before I even realized or questioned whether or not I was. And so it all started for me when I read Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art. And what it's about is basically doing and, and just wanting to do. And in that book, Stephen Pressfield talks about the concept of the force, all the distractions in our lives that keep us from creating. So I read this when I was 20, 21, and I was just getting into writing. And when I first read The War of Art, it clicked, man. It was like, I was 20 or 21 at the time. And I thought, oh, it all makes sense now. Everything in my life is basically a form of not writing. That's how crazy my interpretation of the book is, right? And so I read that book, and from that point, I was maybe 20, 21 to about 25. Man, I became, you know, a grunt worker for all of the books that I've written, all the writing that I've done. I was a slave to that habit, right? That habit was not serving me. It was, it was chaining me down. And a great example of what I'm talking about is, you know, back, th back then I was, let's say I was in an improv comedy class, right? And after class, everyone in the group would go out and sort of hang out for a couple extra hours. Most times I did not because I had to get up early in the morning to write. That was the story that I told myself was if I miss tomorrow morning's writing session, then that's going to make it more likely that I'll miss the next day and the day after that. And then it's just a slippery slope and I'm not going to be a writer anymore. And so a lot of times, you know, I, I did want to stay out, but I just wouldn't because I had this belief that, you know, I have to sacrifice all of these other things if I want to write. The consequence of that is that because I'm not fulfilling my desire to socialize with people and get connection that way, that desire comes out sideways in riskier or more har harmful behaviors. So what would that look like? Let's say two or three months would go by that I would write five to six days a week, at least one hour every day. After those two or three months, I was burnt out and I, you know, I was like, I need something adventurous, something crazy at this point. Because just going out with friends isn't going to hit that bar anymore because I haven't been hitting it for three months. So I need something that, that's going to stimulate me a lot. And that resulted in like some sex addiction, drug addiction, and just it, it, it was a slippery slope in the wrong direction. Another consequence of becoming a slave this way was that I began to resent everyone and, and everything that took away from my writing habit. And so, you know, I was in a couple different relationships throughout those four or five years. And whenever there was trouble that we were going through, whenever the waters were kind of murky in the relationship, I had a harder time focusing on writing naturally, right? Because my relationship required more of my attention. But instead of slowing down and focusing on it, I, I created this story or I told myself this story again that my relationship is the reason I'm not able to write as much anymore. And so I started to resent my partner and then, you know, both things started to fail. And on top of that, I would punish myself for not writing and then get resentful of my partner. And then I wouldn't write even more the next day. And I would punish myself again because there was no, there was no link. I was not linking the behaviors. I thought they were too very, you know, if anything, they were only linked because my relationship was negatively affecting my writing. That was the story I told myself. And so when did this all really start to click for me? It must have been around the time that I read David Goggins' memoir, Can't Hurt Me, because I found myself, you know, in a similar spot as when I read The War of Art. It was saying all of the same things. If you had to boil down David Goggins' message to one thing, it would be conquer your inner drill sergeant, conquer your inner bitch, which if you haven't read David Goggins' book, You've probably heard that same phrase, that same message from Joe Rogan. 
Now, I have nothing against Rogan or Goggins, right? I thoroughly enjoyed Goggins' memoir, and I enjoy listening to Rogan's podcast. So it's nothing against them. It's only this specific message of theirs that I highly disagree with. Now, why I disagree with it is because Conquer Your Inner Bitch is basically waging a war between you and whatever that voice inside of you is. It's pitting you against your body and your mind, which was basically, you know, the dynamic that I was already in. By the time I heard Rogan and Goggins talking about this, it resonated with me because it was already what I was doing. And so it gave me a justification to continue doing it. And so the problem with this for me really, you know, the reason that it's a lose-lose is because even if I work out, I'm doing it at the expense of my peace of mind. And if I don't work out, then I feel like shit about it. I feel like I've lost this war. So how do I, you know, what do I do instead? What I've found that works for me is that I build a partnership with my body and my mind instead of fighting against them. The opposite of conquering your inner bitch is trusting your inner warrior. Now this, this, this dynamic that I'm talking about, it can branch into, you know, 50 different behaviors, but really all of those behaviors fall into the same category. And it's listening to your body and listening to yourself instead of automatically assuming that if you one day don't feel like working out or don't feel like writing or whatever your thing is, if you don't feel like doing that thing, not automatically assuming that it's because you're being a bitch that day and that it's because you're weak and that it's because it's your mind trying to fool you into some miserable hole by listening to that voice and by you know trusting your inner warrior what you're basically doing is building trust with yourself you're saying okay this isn't automatically going to be a negative thing let me hear what you have to say right it's basically the difference between if you're in a romantic relationship assuming that when your partner comes to you to tell you something they have negative intentions and assuming that, you know, whatever they're trying to say isn't to hurt you, but it's actually coming from a place of love. So on the days when I don't feel like doing this thing, when I don't feel like participating in my habit, again, I stop and I listen and I think and I investigate, is there something going on in my life right now that perhaps requires some of my attention and I can compromise or sacrifice this habit for today so that I can focus on this other part of my life, right? Maybe I've been neglecting this part of my life and just telling myself that I'm keeping up with my habits when really there's one that I haven't been keeping up with. And so I want to make one thing very clear because this, this is not about using life as an excuse to not build good habits and to keep up with them. But that, you know, that gets into murkier waters where it's, it's really, I can't sort of define what using it as an excuse is or is not. I can define it for myself, but I don't believe that there's like a general, if you do this, that means it's an excuse. And if you don't, that means that you're listening to your body or whatever, right? And so, so just being mindful that I'm not, I'm not giving you permission or giving you an excuse to just be lazy or, or not stay true to yourself and not hold your promises. Where I'm coming from is more of reframing you know, how you approach those moments and, and, and sort of, you know, letting go of this denigrating belief that if I miss doing my habit one day, that's going to increase the likelihood that I'll miss it again. And that's a slippery slope to never building good habits, right? That's, you know, maybe there's some scenario where that's true, but uh, holding on to that belief and pushing yourself with that belief I think even if you do end up building the habit, personally, that led me to an even worse place where I hated myself. Sure, I had this habit where I was writing every single day and I ended up publishing, you know, more books than probably anybody I know at my age, but at what cost? right? For me, the cost outweighed the result. And so some of the positives of this reframe and some of the things I've noticed for me have been, I feel less pressure and I just kind of take things at my pace, right? Because again, one of these other denigrating belief systems is that you have to do 
if you want to be worth anything. And you know, you see all these tweets and all these people that post little quotes about how, you know, while everyone was out partying, I was working overtime in my one studio apartment in Manhattan or whatever, right? It's like, I sacrificed six years of joy and socialization to build my business. And it's like, okay, man, I'm not saying that that is automatically worse than not having done that, but I'm also not just going to buy into the belief that that is better than all the people who spent time with their community. And, and the thing about it is that once I get rid of that sociopathic belief, because that's really what it is when you boil it down, I get to do all of the same things, right? That doesn't mean I'm never going to write again. That doesn't mean I'm never going to work out again. That just means that I get to do it in a way that serves me and not in some structured and very rigid way. Because again, ultimately, especially if you're a creator, Creative. You would you rather build a rigid and, and just monotonous habit or would you rather create pockets of time where where maybe, you know, you're spontaneous and you decide that today you're going to paint for two hours instead of whatever the other thing that you were doing is. And, and because ultimately all these, all the, the rigidity of your structure boils down to made up deadlines, right? I don't have to publish one YouTube video every five days just because I said that. I can publish a video one week and then not publish the next week. And sure, there's going to be tons of YouTubers that have millions of followers and they're going to tell you if you don't do YouTube this specific way that they did it, that you're not going to be successful. That's not a belief that I subscribe to. And, and I believe that that does more harm than any good because I don't have to sacrifice in order to achieve. I can have a very strong social life and a community and be present for the people in my life. And I can also publish books or make YouTube videos and have a full-time job, right? I can do all of these things, but you know, it, it depends on how I'm doing them, right? If I have a full-time job and I go out five nights a week and I have a side hustle and I exercise and I play in like sports co-ed leagues, you know, that just sounds like hell, you know, if that is all my day every day. But if I'm, you know, publishing one book every three years, then that means I don't have to be writing every single day of my life and doesn't make the book that I'm going to publish any less worthy or any worse than it would be if I wrote it in 30 days or in four months or, you know, Again, these are just made up deadlines. And finally, what I've found to be the most rewarding thing of all of this is that by reframing my life this way, I am actually building more trust. You know, it, it sounds counterintuitive. How am I building more trust if I say to myself one day, hey, you know what? I don't have to write today. I don't have to work out today because, you know, maybe somebody that I know is going through something really terrible and it's weighing heavy on me and I need to grieve that today. So I'm just not gonna do my habit today. How is that building more trust, right? Well, if you don't keep up your habits, then you're not gonna trust yourself, right? That's what everybody says. That's not what I've found to be true and I'll explain why. When I show, when I prove to myself that I can miss a day of my habit two or three days, take a month long vacation and miss all my habit for that whole month and come back to it afterward, that is where the real trust in myself has been built because it shows me that it doesn't matter if I miss it one day. I don't have to operate under the belief that I'm so weak that if I miss one day or whatever the time frame is for you, that that is going to destroy my habit. I prefer to operate under the belief that I already have the habit, right? And this is because I've actually demonstrated to myself. I'm not just saying, tell yourself that you already have the habit. I've already demonstrated to myself that I have this habit because I've kept it up for long enough that it doesn't matter if I go through periods of time, seasons of my life where I don't engage in it as much, right? Maybe I don't meditate for two weeks, because it's just too hard for whatever reason. Maybe my you know, family member is sick. Maybe my relationship just ended. Maybe I just got fired from my job. I, I give myself permission to rest whenever it is that my body and my mind are asking for rest. 
because the habit is going to be there. The habit's always going to be there. It's not going to go anywhere. I can always revisit it and it's always, I'm always going to come back to it. And so in the two years since I've reframed this, surprisingly, you know, my output hasn't gone down. I am just happier with my life as I'm producing all of these things, right? I'll, I've started making YouTube videos. I'm writing two books right now. You know, I'm, I'm still doing a lot of things, but in my day to day, it's not clustered with all this doing because I don't care if it takes me six months longer to publish a book. If it means I'm going to be that much happier during the writing of it, why that would, that's a no brainer. So anyway, that's been my experience. I hope that it helps or touches you in some way. If you have any questions, if you disagree, or if there's anything else that you're struggling with, leave a comment below. I'd love to to hear what you have to say and who knows maybe I can make my next video about that thank you for watching and have a wonderful week